Marley's Tangled Tale by Ellie Jackson and Laura Colwood. A true story about the problems of balloon releases and plastic in our oceans. Out on the cliffs of a cool and green land lived a beautiful little puffin called Marley. She had come back from the ocean to the burrow where she had been born to lay her first smooth white egg which lay tucked safe and warm under her tummy. Marley and her mate Rocky took it in turns to hunt for fish whilst tending their egg and they would slowly waddle out of their burrow onto the cliff edge then dive gracefully down the steep drop to the ocean below. Marley loved the freedom of the gliding close to the waves before quickly diving under the clear blue waters to catch little silvery fish in her beak. Inland and far away from Marley's home, the townspeople were excitedly getting ready for the grand opening of their new big store. The mayor was coming to cut the ribbon. There would be cakes and ice cream, as well as a juggler, animals to pet and prizes to be won. Hundreds of colorful balloons were going to be released into the sky, each one with a special number and a poem attached, which read, our new store is the biggest and the best. Can you tell us where our balloon came to rest? The children wondered if the balloons would travel as far as the farm, or the woods, or the river, or even the sea. They all hoped that someone would find their balloon when it came down, as then they would win the prize. Finally, the time came for the mayor to cut the ribbon and release the balloons. What a wonderful sight they made as they soared upwards, bobbing together one moment, then floating apart the next. Sometimes a red balloon went highest, and then next it was a yellow one. The crowds clapped and cheered as the balloons went higher and higher, until gradually they started to spread out and head for the countryside, beyond the town where darker rain clouds had started to gather. The people packed up and went home, full of the joy and fun of the day. Yet some of the children were starting to worry about what was going to happen to the balloons as they raced along towards the storm. Soon the balloons had left the crowds and the town far and behind and were floating over the distant patchwork of farms and fields in the open countryside. They were hurtling headlong into the storm clouds which were rapidly building on the hot summer's day. The wind blew stronger, buffeting and hurrying the balloons along whilst fat raindrops spattered angry onto the balloons, pushing them down in the cold air. One by one, the coloured balloons started to fall and some of their long silvery ribbons became tangled together. Some fell from the sky onto the farms, some fell into the woods, some fell into the rivers and the last and biggest balloons fell far away onto the cliffs and then into the sea. Down they all went to the ground they had started from, becoming trapped and tangled in the hedgerows and tree branches or ending up floating in the streams and rivers out to sea. No longer were they bright and round with streaming ribbons, full of joy and summer fun. Instead, they had become small, wrinkled and shriveled little things which were twisted and knotted. Some had even burst and the happy little poems lay bedraggled and forlorn with no hope of being found by the people. Marley's puffin colony had felt the storm gathering many hours before and had called the alarm to each other. All along the cliff tops, the little puffins had disappeared, sheltering from the wind and the rain in their dark and cosy burrows, keeping their precious eggs warm and dry. Gradually, Marley felt the raindrops which were pounding on the earth above her head start to slow and then it was her turn to waddle along the tunnel to start her hunt for fish. Rain had made the cliff slippery and dangerous and waves were crashing onto the rocks below. Marley knew she would have to stick close to shore in case she grew tired battling into the strong winds. She loved to skim the tops of the waves, flying close so she could see any fish below the surface. But when the waves were rough, she knew she had to fly higher. 
She made several turns, her wings beating hard to fight against the wind, when suddenly she saw a familiar flash of silver, and she banked and swooped down, gliding effortlessly under the waves to catch at the fish. Snap, snap, snap went her beak, and she eagerly waited for the wriggling fish to lie still. But they danced and tugged at her, pulling her this way and that way. Marley was confused as to what was happening. One of her wings felt tight and wouldn't flap. When she tried to call for help, her beak wouldn't open. She floated on the surface, paddling her legs furiously to try to get to shore. But wave after wave pushed her around. Time passed for Marley, day turning to night and night turning to day before the wind died down. The sea became calm again with the sun brightening and warming Marley's cold body. Her once graceful diving and swimming had become a desperate fight to reach the beach. But no matter how much she tried, she kept swimming in circles round and round until she was quite dizzy. Weakened now and getting colder, Marley drifted onto the beach where she ended up amongst the seaweed and the plastic rubbish that had washed down from the rivers and been churned up by the storm. Marley lay dreaming of her cliff-top home and her smooth white egg when suddenly she heard voices calling to one another. She saw many people who had come to clean the beach of the plastic rubbish which surrounded her. Finally, they found her, tangled in a silvery ribbon and trailing three withered balloons. The ribbon had wound itself round and around her, forcing her beak closed and trapping her wing to her side. Gentle hands held Marley tight, while the silvery ribbon she had mistaken for fish was cut free. Her wing was free, her beak was free, but still the hands held her strong and safe. The people had seen birds like her before, weak and hungry, and they knew she needed the help of the wildlife sanctuary before they could release her. At the wildlife sanctuary, Marley saw lots of other boxes filled with all different types of animals, seagulls, seals, foxes, rabbits and owls, and luckily all of them had been found and rescued. Some of them had swallowed the balloons thinking they were food. Others had become trapped in the ribbons like Marley. One seal, who had eaten a balloon, would need an operation by the vets to remove it. If the balloons were left in the animals' tummies or stayed tangled round their bodies, then the animals could die. The vets and helpers had a lot of work ahead of them to make sure all the animals were healthy again and ready to be released. Marley thought of her egg waiting for her as she ate the fresh fish she was given. Quickly, she grew stronger and stronger and was soon ready to be released back to her home. The kind people took her back to the beach where she had been found. Marley was carried down near to the waves and she grew excited as she recognised the sounds and smells of home. The box was finally still and the lid was opened. Marley lay quiet for a moment. Then, as quick as she could, she flew up higher and higher to the top of her cliffs, searching for her burrow amongst all the others. Calling to Rocky, she finally heard his answer, knowing that he would be with their egg, keeping it safe and warm and waiting for her to come home. Marley flew down and landed, waddling as fast as she could through the tunnel to tumble into their burrow. She felt for her egg desperate to feel the smooth round shell she knew so well but all she could feel were feathers the soft downy feathers of her brand new baby puffling her heart felt full of love for this tiny little baby and as she as rocky looked proudly on marley knew that she had had a lucky escape and that she was free free of the balloons and the ribbons the people had put into the sky free to teach her baby to dive and swim, to swoop and fly in their beautiful home.